What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted. What I do on this podcast is I do a brand new episode every single day on audio where I'm just documenting my journey as an independent musician. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you know to go subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss an episode. So what we're going to talk about today is what the heck is a niche? Niche, 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 meh, meh, meh. There's all these different definitions. What most people know a niche means is basically it's a small group of people that are really specific. Now, before we even get into explaining a niche more, I want you to understand why you need to know this, okay? Even if you're a, now, for a business owner, if you're a business owner, a local business owner, or anything like that, you know why you need to know this. As an artist, there is a very, very specific reason why you need to know what a niche is because what you want to do as an artist is niche down your fan base. Who is your ideal fan? And we've, I've addressed what that means, but I'm going to just go ahead and give it to you again. If you're an artist and you're making a lot of music, which is great, you should be making as much music as you possibly can. If you're posting on social, if you're collaborating with other artists and producers, that's awesome. Keep doing that. But if you don't know exactly who your ideal fan is, you're not gonna get very far, right? Now, the thing is, immediately what people start thinking when I ask, hey, who's your ideal fan or who's your target market? That's kind of that general term. A lot of people go, well, my my person is from ages da 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 da. They're this type of person. They live in this location. That's not what I need to know and that's not what you need to know. What you need to do is get really specific on the person, the persona. You need to make up a story about your ideal fan. So for example, for me as a music producer and as an artist, I have my ideal fan. Okay, his name is Eddie. I made the name up, obviously. I don't know, well I know a lot of Eddies, but I don't actually know this person. I just made up a story about, you know, describing a person. That's very similar to me, but you know, Eddie, 22 year old artist, middle class America, very motivated, very into entrepreneurship, wants to partner with somebody, you know, um, wants to learn how to make a full time income and become wealthy. Like, I wrote like whole two pages about my person. Now, that is coming up with your ideal fan. What is the niche, though? The niche, this is what I describe as a niche. I, I don't really know where I heard this, to be honest with you. I might have made this up, but I, I don't know. I probably heard it from somewhere else and developed. I don't want to take full credit for the idea, but to me, a niche is a specific person at a specific time and place in their career, in their journey. Specific time and place in their journey. Okay? Why is that important? Because as service providers or product providers, we want to try to fill a need for our customers or for our fans. Now, let's talk business and then I'll relate it to music. As a business owner, let's say that you are a gym or you're a personal trainer. Let's say you're a personal trainer and you own a gym and you're really your background is on personal training. All right, so you're a personal trainer, you own a gym. All right? Now, In that world alone, there's tons of things going on in fitness and health and wellness and nutrition. Like you can, there's so much, right? You you could be like trying to help people get stronger, try to help people lose body fat, try to help people lose weight, uh, try to help people with their flexibility. You want to do injury mitigation, right? You might want to help people with their dieting. There's so many different things that you can do but not necessarily that you should do because what we want is we want to help people at a specific place in time. So I'll give you a great, you know, in this example, let's say me personally, I'm at a specific place in my fitness and health journey, right? I, this year I lost 30 pounds. So I'm not in the world, like at the beginning of the year, my whole thing was how do I lose weight? That's where I was. So if you were selling me something on how to lose weight, I would have taken it. Now, I'm not in a place where I want to lose more weight. I don't think I should lose weight because if I lose weight, I'll be like a stick. So I don't want to lose more weight. Now I'm at a point where I want to, um, I want want to be in great cardiovascular shape, I want to be strong, and I want to mitigate injury. 
that's where I'm at a point in. I'm at a point where I want to be in great shape. I want to uh, be way healthy. I want to be in such. I want to be in peak physical condition, and I also want to mitigate injury. That's my most. That's actually top priority number one. Because I know how to get in great shape. I know how to push myself. I know exercises that I need. I'm mostly on this injury mitigation side where I, I wanna I wanna be serious about my recovery so that I don't get injured a lot. So if somebody came around and was like, hey, and I actually, it's funny because I actually know a guy who can help me with this, but so I'm gonna probably hit him up, but if somebody were to come along and say, hey, are you great at exercise but always getting injured? Click below and take the top 10 mistakes um, that most athletes make when exercising and getting themselves injured. I would be like, oh my God, I'm all over that, right? So. If somebody were to hit me with, you know, hey, are you a single mom and feel like you don't have time to exercise? Here's 10 great tips on how to exercise when you have kids. I would completely ignore that because I'm not a single mother and I'm not a single father. I don't, even, I don't have kids. So that wouldn't be anything for me. Does that make sense? So both of those are in the fitness world, but one would cater to a different group than the other. How do you do this as a musician? Let's talk music producers first. If you're a music producer, marketing to me wouldn't work very well if you said, hey, I've got 15 free beats. Now, I actually market 15 free beats, but I know who I'm talking to. I'm marketing to people who need beats. That's why I'm kind of getting out of that whole space because I don't want to market to people who need beats. I want to market to people who need higher level problems because when you solve high level problems, you get high level money. People who need beats and will do it for free don't have high level problems that they need solved. They do, but they don't have the money to pay for it. So I'm kind of getting out of that space. But if you want some free beats, go to getthestarterpack.com. You can get yourself 15 free beats. Ding! That's a little plug. But I want to get into the space of where I'm kind of helping people with higher level problems. But as a music producer, you know, I have a friend of mine named Charismatic, and he wants to help people with their singing and songwriting. He knows where they are. He's like, I want to market to artists who, who don't need beats, who make great music, but they need to make even better music, and they want to chart on the pop charts. I'm gonna help them with their singing and their songwriting. Boom, I got a friend named Tech Bands. He's really good at vocal coaching. He wants to work with somebody who's serious about their music, who puts out a lot of music but needs to improve their vocals and their singing. Boom, he's gonna help them with that. Lizzie the Gifted. I wanna help artists who are serious about putting out music, who've already put out a lot of music, who understand social media marketing but they wanna start building an income for themselves. Bam. Does that make sense? So you got to find a specific place and time that your ideal market is in and service them. You want to catch them at a moment. You want to say, hey, you're at this moment. I'm going to help you get to that next moment and then just keep getting more people. Now that person where you're like, hey, I want to take you from this moment to the next moment. You want to keep ascending them up your value ladder. That's called ascending them up your value ladder and that's called ascension. That's called building a business, right? Now... If you're an artist and you're a rapper and you have music and you're like, well, what do I do? How do I help people in their life? That's a great question. There are, There is value in entertaining people. There is value in inspiring and motivating. There is value in giving people a place where they feel like they are understood and that's your music. So if you're an artist and let's say your whole angle is kind of that sad boy vibe where you feel like life is you're just you always are struggling to be happy and you feel like you're sad and you're trying to escape that kind of mentality and you want to be positive but it's so hard for you to do that how many people go through that how many people go through that exact same thing if your music that's why little peep was so successful because he gave himself into his music and people felt like they could relate to him same thing with um with Drake, like why does Drake hit so well? Because I know for me, why do I love Drake? Because he says things in his songs that I'm like, oh my God, bro, I literally felt that and relate to what you said so much. That's how you can really start to relate to your fans and that's why you're gonna be able to monetize your music because people feel so inclined to wanna be around you and they're gonna buy your music because they feel like you, they under, they're understood by you. They feel like you relate to them because you're catching them in that moment in time. So the things that you need to do right after you watch this video, number one, you've got to come up with who is your ideal fan. Who is the person that, who, who, what is the story? Tell the story of your ideal fan and the next, what, what moment in time are they in where they need your music or they need your product or their service or your service? 
That's gonna be what's really important. So that's what a niche or niche is. That's what it is. All right? Hey, if you got any value out of this episode, I would love it if you subscribed to the podcast. If you're on YouTube right now, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss an episode. And don't forget, tell a friend. I'm doing a brand new audio episode every single day, and I do not want you to miss out, all right? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast. I'll talk to you again soon. And of course, happy Thanksgiving. Peace.